Right, we're off to the main dealers to pick up some cars. Adrian's driving me there, and Marini's little smart. I've never been in one of these before. It's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> the two of us crammed in this little thing. Oh my word. Well, you're crammed. <laughs> <laughs> So after taking an extremely long time um, at the dealership, because I met the owner of New Road Garage in Torrington, the garage I pass every single day, um, and I used to do it when I used to go to work into my corporate job as well, and I used to admire his setup with, he yeah, had the, exactly the right price cars for the uh, area. I've always heard really good things about him, uh, customer service wise, but first time I've ever met him, he happened to be there picking up cars at the same time as me. So I had a good long chat with him, good to catch up with him. Um, so another good contact for me. And this game is all about contacts. Adrian's behind me in that nuts little smart car that he drives like I do not know what. It's insane. Oh, I've been pulled for a red light. Okay. Uh, and I'm in the Vauxhall Corsa that I've just picked up. So this is a 2000 and I can't remember, 2011, 2012. Corsa 1.2. It's an SE because we've got the heated steering wheel, uh, heated seats, we've got Bluetooth, we've got steering controls on the steering wheel, I imagine yeah, we've got cruise control, alloy wheels, the half leather trim and the texture dashboard. So it's the SE model which is a nice model to have, it appeals to everyone spent wise. Only done 56,000 miles, I uh, can't remember about the history, we'll have to go through the book in a bit. I kind of remember that it did have good history, but I've been driving it now for about 10 minutes or so, and it drives well. It actually feels quite nippy for a 1.2 Corsa. And this is a 1.4 and I've messed up. I can't remember, we'll check when we get back. It's actually really clean. Inside is really tidy. The issue with this one is a dented front wing and a scraped door, which we'll look at in a bit. But the air con's blowing cold. It steers nicely, there's no knocks and bangs, it goes through the gears nicely, engine sounds like a standard Corsa unit, there's no excessive channel rain or any channel rain, chain rattle or anything like that. Um, seems like it could be a good buy. Sorry for the view of the headrest, but we're out on our second pickup, which is the Vauxhall Mocha. Now I don't know about the spec of this one, I'm afraid I know nothing about Mockers. Um, it's got cruise control, Bluetooth phone, DAB radio, all round electric windows, electric mirrors. I'm assuming I've got, I've got air conditioning, I've got eco mode, I've got some kind of hill hold descent or something there as well. A 1.7 diesel engine, the interior is fabric. Uh, it's done 89,000 miles. I've been driving it for a few minutes now. Seems all good. Punchy, nice punchy diesel. Smooth changes. Suspension's all good. Having gone through all the controls to make sure everything works so far. Uh, condition wise, bodywork seems in really good condition. The one strange thing is, we've got one gunmetal grey alloy. The rest are silver apparently the owners had it for years never really noticed <laughs> right gang time to start looking at what we picked up and we've been joined by a few cars from bca as well unfortunately not the micro that everybody's waiting on we've had the focus delivered and we've had the peugeot 208 delivered so i uh, have driven the focus things are slightly out of order because it's been a bit crazy uh, i'll put in into the into this video little driver the focus is going to drive the 208 back tonight but whatever quick look over i said i'd show you the cars i picked up from the main dealer condition wise i haven't had a chance to wash any of these yet i've just bought them in so here's the mocha uh again can't remember what spec it is uh, i'm sure one of you guys will know so we've got chrome finished fogs down the bottom uh we've got the chrome grill we've got that slightly gun metal alloy there and then the rest of them are silver which uh I kind of, kind of understand. Someone might have just thought the wheel was dirty, I guess, if they bought it dirty. Apparently, the owner says <laughs> they didn't notice. 
Uh, tires wise, loads of tread there. Loads there, they're not very old, the tires. There is a lot of dirt on the car, it does need a good clean. White's nice neutral color, isn't it? We've got, what have we got? Rear parking sensors. Uh, tires this side, the same. Wheels are good, they're not curved. Luckily the tire sticks past the wheel a bit, doesn't it? So we haven't got any curbing on there. Like I said, it just needs a really good clean. Bodywork wise, doesn't seem to be any real dings. Nothing I can see here. It's had some protectors on the door by the looks of it. So that's a bonus because it means you haven't got chipped edges. This doesn't look too scuffed up along here. Um, although that's the Golf, that's all now cleaned up, ready for pickup. It's all valeted, ready for pickup. The uh, inside, it's just some cleaning to be done. The fabric could do with a bit of a cleaner. We've got all round electric windows, got electric mirrors, got leather trim steering wheel by the looks of it. Uh, let's set it. We've got the Bluetooth, we've got the cruise control, a uh, nice cold air con. I think I covered that when I drove it. Or that depends what order I'm putting stuff in. I'm getting confused now. Six speed gearbox, service history wise, just check there's nothing I'm going to show anyone. Uh, bit sparse by the looks of it. We've got uh, Strange 15. 1922 very strange all different places as well there's a little bit of paperwork to go through on it but yeah it's just needs a good clean in here the fabrics themselves i think are good yeah seat bolsters are good fabrics good happy with all of that Yeah, back seats are good. It's a bit of dirt in the floor wells. So it's going to be a day's cleaning on this. Proper day's cleaning. Boot isn't too bad. Missing all of our spare wheel kit. Mind you, it probably had gunk in it this one, didn't it? So I need to replace that. I say drove really, really nice. I don't think the private plate's staying with it. I think that's the process of being taken off, unfortunately. Those of you on Instagram that have already commented. So that one looks like, based on how it drove, I can't remember what the MOT is on it in terms of how long it is, but in terms of the way it drove, it looks like this is just a really good cleanup job. The Corsa, um, so you saw me drive this one back, didn't you? The reason it performed well is because it is a 1.4, not a 1.2. Uh, it's the SE, like I said, metallic silver, obviously. Again, um, tyres, plenty of tread there. Alloys are good again, they don't stick out past the tyres, so I don't think we've had a lot of damage on there. Got the lower front spots, spotlights with the chrome surrounds on those as well. It's when we get to this side, we run into some problems. Front wing is dinged in. Came straight back and got one off eBay, exactly the same colour, so we'll be able to swap that straight out. And then there's a door here. That's had a scrape now. I think most of this is going to polish out because the line is still good, really good along here. So I think it's just here where it needs a bit of repair and a little bit of paint. Wing mirror could do with a bit of paint. Once that's done, I think it'd be, it'd be a good car. I mean, the big bonus with this is a mileage only 56,000 miles on 2011. It's got the half leather trim, which is in good nick. This is normally cracked to hell. There's only one little crack there on this one. These are normally really cracked up. It smells exactly the same as the mother in law's one. <laughs> Yeah, and you've got the you've got the Bluetooth front electric windows, don't they? This rear electric windows, you've got the air con, heated seats, heated steering wheel. Sorry if I'm repeating myself on the drive earlier. All the fabrics are in excellent condition. This is gonna want to be honest, this is I think this is probably a pretty mint car. Bar that ding on the front there. It uh it's a really, really clean car, it's gonna clean up really well. Uh, I had a look at the previous MRT mentioned a uh, leak, well obviously not a bad leak from underneath the engine because it passed MRT, it's not hitting the ground, nothing's hit the ground while it's been there but I did notice a little bit around the edge of the sump, so it might be worth dropping the sump and resealing the sump I think, uh, depending on how bad it is, maybe try some stop leak first, swell the seals out if it is that, but the sump's probably on with um, silicon so I don't know it would resolve that. But obviously you have to see how bad that actually is. When you get to this age, you get little weeps, don't you, from stuff. Um, 
if you try to fix it or oh, you'd get the engine out and no one would ever pay you the money would they so that that's the uh that's the two from the main deal all right onto the bca cars so we've got this little peugeot 28 first time i've done one of these this is an allure i understand spec wise really high got the alloy wheels they're in nice nick all the lacquer is good on them we've got the chrome wing mirrors headlights could do with a slight buff on the top edge there got the chrome spots condition wise it's really nice this was a condition two, so bodywork wise, I don't actually have any paint to do. Inside is nice. You got this leather. Oh, I didn't cover the service history on that one, did I? Um, we'll go back to that in a sec. Because um, I can't actually remember what it is, but we'll go back to a sec. So, yeah, nice leather trim in here. The driver's seat needs a little bit of work. Uh, back's in good condition. But nice sort of piano back gloss trim there. Leather trim from stitching on the door cards. This one is fully loaded up. Again, the alloys on this side are really good. It's got sat nav, this one though, and cruise, and it's the top spec one, isn't it? It's the 1.2 VTI. I'm told the 1.2 is an okay engine. It's the 1.6 is a problem. Yeah, a little bit of wear through the bolster there, but I think I can do something to tidy that and repair that. I can, imagine, I can see why they're very highly bolstered seats, very sports like. Electric windows, electric mirrors. Uh, we've got Bluetooth clearly there. Uh, we'll have a look at a few more of the features when we drive. We've got this big screen here, which I imagine has got a lot of compatibility with uh, phones and so forth. And it has sat nav. Can't remember if it's got parking sensors or not. Uh, yeah, rear parking sensors. It's a good colour. On camera, I think the door here shows ever so slightly different. But in reality, in real life, you don't really see that. What was I looking for? Front parking sensors? No, it hasn't got front parking sensors. Got a folder here with handbooks, but I think any service history is going to be in the other folder they gave me. So that's just the, that's just the handbook. We'll check the other folders they gave me to see about service history on this one. Focus now. This was a grade four, and I've had a little drive it and look around. And I'm really surprised it's a grade four. I can't find anything particularly bad with it. There's a little ding in the door here, and there's a scuff here that someone's touched in badly, which I can sort out and improve. But other than that, it's in really good nick. But yeah, other than that, it's in good nick. The alloys are in good nick. There's nothing else down the side of the car here. That alloy's in good nick. Bumpers all in good nick, no stone chipping. That alloy's nice. No dings or dents down the side here. And the rear alloy's nice. Nothing to complain about there at all. Now inside, it's in really good nick. All the seats are nice. I mean, I'll give them a wet clean anyway, just to get some of the base dirt out of them. The carpets are all in great nick. Seats are all in good nick got manual rear windows but electric front windows electric mirrors bluetooth auxiliary input aircon heat front screen six speed box with that 1.5 diesel it's um 101,000 miles uh, the peugeot by the way i think is 90 is that right 90 odd i can't remember i think the peugeot is 90 odd thousand miles it's come with a load of fuel in it as well, which is a bonus. It seems a nice car. It seems too good for a grade four. Now what sometimes happens is, I've got it in my head, and I don't know how true it is, that sometimes they grade the cars down and to sort of give you a heads up that there's another problem with them that isn't so obvious. I think there might be some nice guys out there that do that. And we've got a proper spare wheel. But we'll do the traditional home run in it and um, see what we think the score is. Like I say, I think we'll take the Persia out first, possibly. Again, apologies, this is all over the place a little bit. There's Obviously in a day, there's been a lot of cars coming in. I can't remember what I recorded and what I haven't recorded. Uh, but I'm happy enough having driven that, not to just get into getting that tidied up now. I'm happy enough having driven that to get that into getting tidied up. So after the test drives of these, we can decide where we're going with these. This is the one, it makes me more nervous for some reason. 
I'd have thought this was a nice piece of stock for some, but I guess 90 odd thousand miles. Starting to get up there a bit for some people, but for the age, it's you know perfectly reasonable mileage. It'll be a quite cheap car as well. 2012, I think this is what this, what does this come out at? Oh, I'm gonna get get it wrong now. Is it 3995 something like that? I think a lot of car for the money. Again, compare this to some of the other makes, you wouldn't be getting an awful lot of kit. This is really nicely spec'd out. <sighs> Obviously, a lot of work for me now to be doing. I've got a lot of cleaning to get going on. So heading off for a run in the Peugeot 208. Um, straight away I can tell you there's something neat on the front left. It feels like a lower arm is knocking or it's a really bad track rod end. I've got a feeling it's going to be a lower arm from the type of knock it is. Other than that though, the gearbox seems okay. It's not the most direct in the world. Yeah, could even be a broken spring over there. There's quite a lot of knocking going on there. Find some bumps to go over. I should be able to. No, I think I can hear it rocking the steering. I think it might. Right, so it's either going to be a top mount or a lower arm, I reckon. So we know it's going to need some suspension work. So the question is, what else is it going to need? Because the thing with these. The thing with these auction ones is it's not like the stuff I'm getting from the main dealer where I get to drive it first and I buy it knowing the score. Obviously you don't get to drive these cars from auction so it's a total punt as to what you get. I mean the initial signs are the engine feels smooth enough. The nice thing is just being a 1.2 there isn't an awful lot of stuff bolted onto it to go particularly wrong says before he's fully tested it. <laughs> so we'll probably get it jacked up when we get back to the unit and have a little look see if you spot anything obvious on the suspension side of things. But with the amount of cars I've got going on at the moment he's going to have to go down to Moors and get it sorted out. So we're running the Focus home because it's got loads of fuel in it and it'll give it a good chance to get for a good long run. Those of you who watch the channel for a while know I do like this 1.5 in this Focus. When I used to have company cars in between sort of ordering newer cars, I'd have cars from Thrifty for a few days and I used to get a lot of these 1.5 Focuses and I was always really impressed with them, how quick they were for a 1.5 and how well they handled. They really do handle well. So this one, no lights on the dashboard at all. It sounds quiet enough, it's starting on the button fine. We've got Bluetooth, aircon, CD radio with auxiliary input. Uh, I don't think we've got cruise on this one. Oh, what's that? So we've got a leather trim steering wheel, cloth trim though. Yeah, we've got a nice punch from that diesel. Six speed gearbox. Everything seems smooth as you like. Clutch and gearbox, lovely, absolutely lovely. No problems with that at all. Straight up into sixth. Still on a nice wave of torque. Such a brilliant combination for a family car. You get it, have a bit of fun when you want to, and you won't be uh, doing stupid miles to the gallon, even if you hoot it around. 
And then when you need to get all the family somewhere, there's plenty of room for that too. Chassis on these is really, really well put together. I'm not a massive Ford fan, but I have to admit the Ford Focuses do handle well. And like I say, combined with the, the diesel, you just can ride a big wave of torque. You don't have to be changing gears all the time. Thread your way through the corners. Very little understeering them ever. Really easy to pilot. Okay everyone, so off camera we had a problem just then. The Focus lost power. It just wouldn't accelerate. It was like you were putting your foot down on the pedal and if it's electronic, it wasn't telling the car to accelerate. It was really weird. I've just pulled over, turned the car off back on again. It seems to have power again, but it's not throwing any fault codes on the dashboard. So that's a little worrying. I don't know quite what's happened there. I'd rather almost rather have an engine management light on. Now, I can't remember if I had a BCA assured on this or not, and whether it would cover that, I don't know. Possibly not, they don't drive them, do they? So, um, so I accelerate now, we've got punch, like we did at the beginning. It's almost like it's gone in, into a limbo, but without throwing a code. So those of you that know this engine, comment down below, what do you think that might be then? I can't really, I, I can't think that's going to be, I, I've sold it by just pulling over and turning it off, it's got to be something. I can't imagine I've solved it by pulling it over and turning it back on again, that's normally only if it goes into a limp mode, um, that it'll do that. So more road testing needed for sure, as well as a windscreen clean. So, test drive with the Focus, it's done that thing a couple of times now where I've been following someone, it's been driving absolutely fine, I've had to slow for him to turn off at a junction or whatever, dropped back to like second or whatever, went to pull away, next to no power at all, uh, had to drop it down another cog, get it going again, then it's alright again, or pull it over and turn it off, it's happened twice on three journeys, the rest of the time it seems to have all the power in the world, it's no problem at all. There's no engine lights coming up. So presumably, this was part exchanged for intermittent fault. We need to look under the engine, but I haven't even done that yet. Now this did come to me with a BCA report for low coolant. I assume that was just poor maintenance, but obviously it could be something else, you never know. The coolant level looks to be on minimum, and that coolant bottle is a dirty, dirty color. Hmm, it's got a lot of pressure considering that's not been run for a, almost a day. Coolant level is on the minimum. So, it doesn't seem to have lost any since I've gone for that drive. So it doesn't seem to be using water. Oil is like any diesel, it's black. No mixing going on by the looks of it. Not underneath the cap, but there is a lot of. I don't know if this is a wax cleaner or is this something else? Oh, it's all over the place down here. Look, is that coolant or is that something else? Is that a cleaner? Can't decide. It's more waxy than it is coolant. Maybe a small weep near the turbo there. So we got going on now this has got a receipt with it for having had um uh what was replied egr cooler was fixed on this so that's been done on it but i do notice that just for relatively short runs the fan is running for a long time after you pull up so it may well be getting hot but not getting over temperature because that fan's doing a good enough job of keeping it at temperature but it's getting hot. Mm. So, looks like we might have some work to do on this one. So the day's results are, main dealer buy, it's got body work, but it seems to drive fine. Main dealer buy, needs an alloy painting, needs a really good clean, but other than that, seems a good buy. Auction buy, has a problem, and don't know what it is yet. And auction buy has a problem. Now this one seems to just be the suspension. 
So worst case scenario was placing a shock and a lower arm or something in that corner. Other than that, it drives absolutely really, really well. Uh, I don't have any other concerns about it at all. So that could be a, a cheap fix, relatively cheap fix. But the thing with this is, is both auction buys actually cost, have least, less margin in them than the main dealer buys because you add in the fees and you add in the transportation and um, yeah, you end up with less margin than running down locally, picking them up and having no transportation costs and no auction fees. And it works better for the main dealer as well because the cars get gone quicker and he doesn't have to wait for them to be picked up or for to pay his fees on his side of things either. So, I think we'll leave it there. Tune into the next one and we'll find out if we can sort out what the problem with this Focus actually is and see whether, and also what the problem with the uh, 208 is and whether we can actually get those issues fixed and still have margin in the car to make a profit. It's another <laughs> to all those guys that say we just wash them and stick them out the door, guys. There's always work to be done. We've got bodywork, we've got mechanicals, we've got mechanicals, and if we're lucky, we'll get away with just one out of the four cars, being a case of giving it a wash. We'll still have to get the alloy painted, but it's only like one out of the four that potentially is anything that we could just wash and stick out the door. But that still remains to be seen. There needs to be more testing done on that. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, guys. Like I say, tune into the next one if you enjoyed that, and we'll find out what the score is with this. Oh, and in the next one, we may well have that 2000 plate Nissan Mike with 165,000 miles come from auction with the automatic gearbox. You've all been waiting for it. We know that one's going to be a beaut. Also got a Suzuki Jimny coming in, believe it or not, a year 2000. My cars are getting older, aren't they? Suzuki Jimny coming in. And on automatic... Skoda Fabia, but you wait till you see the state of this car. I give myself a load more work again. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you later.